In this problem, we're going to evaluate this indefinite integral. Let's go ahead and work through it. Solution. So this problem is really interesting because it doesn't fit uh, the patterns that we've been seeing. So we know that if we have an even power of secant, we can save secant squared. And if we have an odd power of tangent, we can save a secant tangent. And that will usually give, get us to the right answer. However, in this problem, um, none of those things happen, right? We have an even power of tangent and an odd power of secant. So the one thing I'm thinking that we can do that will work is to use an identity. So we know that 1 plus tangent squared x is equal to the secant squared of x. So we could solve this for tangent squared by subtracting 1. That would give us tangent squared of x is equal to secant squared of x minus 1. So maybe a good idea is to use this identity and then see what happens. So let's go ahead and try it. So we have 16 parentheses secant squared x minus 1 all divided by secant x dx. Let's go ahead and distribute the 16. This is 16 secant squared x minus 16 over secant x dx. And now we'll go ahead and break it up. So we'll break it up into two integrals. So we'll have 16 secant squared x over secant x dx minus, and then I'll go ahead and pull out the 16 here, and it'll be 1 over secant x dx, right? Because it's just 16 over secant. I just decided to pull it out in that case. So this is 16 times the secant of x dx minus 16. And then um, 1 over secant is cosine, because secant is 1 over cosine. So this is cosine x dx. Very nice. So now we can integrate. So the integral of secant is the natural log of the absolute value of secant plus tangent. Super important formula to know. So this is the natural log of the absolute value of secant x plus tangent x. Worth knowing uh, for sure. Really, really useful. This formula comes up a lot. So when you integrate secant, you get the natural log of secant plus tangent minus and then 16. We're integrating cosine, so we're thinking backwards. You know, what's a function whose derivative is cosine? Well, the derivative of sine is cosine. This will be sine x. And then we still have our constant of integration, uh, capital C. And that would be the final answer in this problem. I hope this video has been helpful. Take care.